Hello again. My name is Dr. Brendan Kinsella. I currently serve as professor of piano at the UTRGV School of Music. And we're going to take this bag of goodies and turn the piano into a percussion orchestra. This presentation will be on John Cage's sonata and inter sonatas and interludes for prepared piano. I'm going to go over how to prepare the piano, step by step, including doing the measurements, what materials to use, and how to achieve Cage's, uh, Cage's unique and uh, very uh, interesting sound world. And then I'll show you a performance that I did earlier this year of the complete cycle. Thank you very much. All right, so I'll just be kind of narrating just a little bit of the process and then show you what we need to do this as long as how to prepare the piano. So the first thing you need is a copy of the score, which has the exact preparations for each note. Um, I'll link that uh, in the presentation materials and you can take a look at exactly what kind of screws and bolts and whatnot that Cage calls for. So we need metallic uh, screws, we need bolts, metallic bolts. We need rubber weather, rather, uh, excuse me, rubber weather stripping, and that's going to be uh, for the lower notes. We need shorter screws. We need a, a variety of large bolts, and importantly, I like to wear safety protective goggles just in case anything pops out. It's unlikely, but it's best to uh, to do so in order to be prepared. All right. So the first thing we do is we look on the score, hello, <laughs> we look on the score and we find the note that Cage is asking for. So for example, the very first note, I know it's hard to see, is top, is uh, A at the top of the piano. So Cage asks for a screw to go between keys two and three. So we find the top A, which is right there, and then we take a short screw, I find that the short screws are better for the top of the piano than the large ones. And then we just count over from left to right. So one, two, three. So it goes in between screws two and three, producing a new tone. There we go. Sometimes you have to feel around for exactly where the, the right part is. He gives you measurements on the chart, but it's, it's really a question of just finding where it is so that it changes the tone. Right? And then from there, we go on to the next one. So G, the next note down, also asks for a screw. Okay? And we do the same thing. So this one has to be about one and three eight inches between, again, screws two and three. So we're going to go ahead and put that in, tilt it a little bit. Sorry, wrong note. There we go. Next, sorry. Very good. That's what we want, yeah. Good, and then reviewing the A. Right? And then that process continues for the majority of the top notes. So what I'll do is I'll just take a short break, I'll prepare the top of the piano, and then you can hear how it sounds in, a, in just a moment. Okay, we're back, and just letting you know we have about a third of the top register done, and imagining what a piano sounds like, here's what it sounds with just the insertion of these screws at different points, so from the very top. Right, so some of them have more of an overtone, like for example there, we can hear an overtone above that. Others stop the sounds. And also when we use the soft pedal, it totally changes the sound based on which strings the objects are inserted. So we're already just a little bit way, our, our way through the top register, so I'll work some more, and then we'll see how the sounds change in the middle register with the introduction of rubber and some other materials such as the furniture bolts. So we'll be right back. Just a quick update. I want you to hear the difference between the small screws and the large ones. So here's the overtones that some of the small screws produce. 
Now when we get into the large ones, so that's already richer and more resonance because the material is larger. Versus, yeah, just a beautiful little subtle uh, change based on the material. So be right back. All right, so now that we have a lot of the larger materials in this register, again, listen for the tone quality of the larger, of the larger materials versus the smaller ones. It's actually quite beautiful, so we'll start from the top and come our way down. Especially there. It's already sounding weirder and weirder with each and every note. And when you put down the soft pedal, it changes the tone even further. So here is this register without the soft pedal. Here it is with the soft pedal, so the hammer is hitting the strings that are prepared. Especially there. It's actually quite lovely, right? In a weird way. So in the next section, there's going to be a different range of materials in the middle register. We're going to start adding rubber. So I'm going to work on that for about uh, five or 10 minutes, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we've worked our way through the middle register. We've started to include rubber, which you take from weather stripping. What you do is you just cut off a short piece and then apply it to the string at the part that Cage asks for. We've also started to include more bolts and bigger pieces of metal. So again, reviewing what the top ones sound like. Pretty thin, right? And with the lower ones, again, with that, those richer materials, getting more resonance. Now the rubber stops the sounds completely. So for example, there on the E flat, that really makes it a percussive note. And then here with the lower tones, sorry, wrong way. We get a big resonance on the overtone from that one. So whereas the top ones have kind of a sweeter sound, these bottom ones tend to be more sour. So he has a better uh, contrast between the, the varieties of tone colors there. So let me work on the bottom and then we'll show you all when it's done. Thank you. Okay, so here we are at the end with a lot of different materials inside. So I want to play some of these tones for you so you can hear how it changes. Again, with the size of the material affecting the quality. So the lower ones, you hear a lot of overtone in them. Especially these ones get more of that resonance. the soft pedal down. So the famous one. In the left hand, there's already a lot more of a percussive sound quality. So that's just a very quick guide on how to do this. So basically you follow the instructions that are in the score, roughly measure where it is on the strings, and then using really whatever materials you think will produce the best tone quality will kind of get you um, to what Cage is after. He was on record himself saying that whatever sounds good is fine. So the, the measurements themselves are somewhat of a loose guide as long as they produce a tone that is interesting and then something that doesn't sound like the piano. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this quick look into John Cage's Sonatas and Interludes for Prepared Piano.